Crackhead sitting on the corner. Looking like you might be in need. Wondering if you can give him a little bit of cheese for another crack rock and a little Mickey D's. Oh, he gon' get it. Remember sitting in my uncle kitchen, I was eight though. Whipping up a little something for them pesos. Ah, as we smooth into this interview, listening to that tut, that video you just seen right there, we are back with this MrTelefero.com. And as you can see, I'm with an artist out of the 423. Um, he dropped that Preacher's Son to start the year off. Now we got that mixtape out and everybody's vibing to this music. I'm here with Tut. How you doing today, my man? What's up, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Now you started out as YG Tut. Yeah. Well, why the name changed? Why are we just Tut now? Um, YG Tut, I mean... Like, that's what niggas started calling me, you know, like, as far as, like, my homies, you know, mm -hmm. like, Rob and, like, Michael DaVinci, they started calling me that. But it started off as a group that me and Zay was going to, you know, name. Like, it was just going to be, like, a joint group for me and Isaiah Rashad. And uh, we was going to call that YG Tut, meaning Young G's and Kings. Isaiah Rashad somebody that's Isaiah Rashad me. is um, signed to Top Dog Entertainment. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, we um ended up, well, I ended up saying it in a song called Perp Perp, and then after that, niggas was like, uh, that should be your name, pretty much. So, like, I just took it around with it. But then I dropped it down to Tut, and, you know, um, you know, it's simply because I wasn't really feeling the YG, you know. So many thing. YGs out there right yeah. now. Yeah, and then, um, you know, um, on top of that, like, my great-grandfather, they call him Tut, mm. you know, which I later, I later came to find find out that it's uh they call my um, great grandfather Tut. But uh, if you break it down it's like an acronym for the understood truth too. Yeah, so that's I mean So now you got that meaning behind why he's just Tut now. Yeah. So uh let's get let's get right into preacher's son. Yeah. Uh, this is that vibe music. Is it safe to say you make that kind of chill, get in your zone, smoke out, whatever you have in music or, or what's your category? If you had to put your music into a category, I don't want to marginalize you or anything, but would you I mean, what I do pretty much just like my method, like I'll just be trying to be real, like pretty much like it's like far as like what I'm saying in the song, it probably gives you like a chill vibe or a laid back vibe as far as like the production and what you know, Kate is doing, but like as far as what I'm doing, I'm just trying to express like, you know, real life situation and like, you know, somehow, you know, try to give a little bit of advice, you know, in like certain, you know, aspects, you know, situations, you know. And you just dropped this to start the year off and you doing crazy numbers. I see the YouTube, the SoundClouds. Yeah. Like what's this been like for you? This is this gotta be kinda big for you. I mean, it's cool, man, you know what I'm saying? Um I mean, Chattanooga is now starting, you know, get a lot of attention, you know, itself and uh, Isaiah Rashad, you know, he was the first, you know, to yeah, come out yeah, of Chattanooga yeah. and I'm coming out behind him, so it's a beautiful thing. We don't got nowhere else to go up, you know, from here, so uh, it's cool, you know, but um, I mean, we work, we work for this, man, to be honest, man, so it's like, this is what we, you know, been working for. I'm happy to say that I've, you know, been able to make, you know, rap. You're rapping a job for me, you know, mm -hmm. at this point, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, like, it's crazy, man. I was, like, FaceTiming with my, like, my mom when I first got here, you know, to the hotel and shit. Because it's the first time, you know, any of us will never, you know, just experience, you know, this type of shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. just off of, you know, music. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's just, you know, crazy, you know. You know, like, it's just, it's well-deserved, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's, you know, a good way to put it. You bring up Chattanooga, and uh, that's where you're from, and that's where it all started. How hard is that, you know, trying to, you know, come up out of a city like you just said? It's just starting to get the respect musically. So how hard is that, you know, trying to come up from a, a city that, you know, just kind of been under, under the bus a little bit for music? I mean, I'm blessed, man. Me, like, I was, you know, I already, you know, I had support, you know, mm -hmm. from a lot of people, you know, including, you know, Isaiah Rashad and, a lot of people, you know, over there, like the TDE camp and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, even, you know, people down there in Atlanta and shit like that. You know, as far as, like, Sony Digital and, you know, other people, you know, giving me, you know, their support. And uh, then reached out, you know, to, you know, give me, you know, uh, advice and, you know, stuff. So, are you you bring up Top Dog. That's like the third or fourth time I didn't heard that so far. Are we thinking about trying to follow Isaiah Rashad's footsteps? I'm not Maybe. trying to follow Isaiah Rashad's footsteps. I'm just doing my own thing. But gotcha, I gotcha, mean, gotcha. like, I feel like it's necessary, you know, to, you know, shut them out because they took him in, you know what I'm saying? And that's, 
like a lot of people don't know that Isaiah Rashad, that's my family. You know what I'm saying? Just like K Tuffin, my family, or like Shuey, my family. K Tuffin, by the way, to producing a lot of the tracks that you hear. Yeah, K Tuffin, the producer, Kate but yeah. it's like we all came up together. You know what I'm saying? And we watch, we like, just like people watching me come up now, like we was the ones sitting there, you know, watching Isaiah on to come up, like. Uh, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, we was there before, you know what I'm saying? Like, those stages even happened. So, like, we all knew each other before this shit started happening. So, it was like, that's why we so tight and that's why we so close. <coughs> so, uh, I mean, like, I'm cool. I know Dave and, uh, like, I done met, excuse me, I done met Punch, you know, once once mm-hmm. or twice before, and, you know, Kendrick and stuff like that. But, like, all them people, they good people. I fuck with all of them. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody out and you know, I got to talk, chop it up. We, you know, we'll fuck, you know, a minute or two. Like all of them good people. They just, you know, they don't act like cele- celebrities. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like when you, like come into contact with them. Well, not most of them. I ain't, like, I ain't really get to talk to school by kid when I met him, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, he was, like, finna do a show and shit mm-hmm. when I met him, though. so, that's Where were y'all like, at? What, what, what city? Where were y'all? Nashville. Nashville, okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Him and uh, Isaiah was on tour. Yeah. Yeah. You bring up Kendrick, and, and I want to, we want to kind of, this is like the get to know you phase for you. Uh, you bring up Kendrick, and let's, let's stick there with music. Like, Kendrick's one of the top artists in the game. We're not, we're not questioning that. But his methods, how he kind of just puts out music here you know not giving the fans like these these mixtapes every six months or whatever first question what do you do you agree with his methods the way he puts out music and second where do you fit in with like how you will be giving us music in the future um i mean you know we're doing our own thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean (coughs) it's not really a method to what we do personally you know what i'm saying like uh we just kind of go with the flow, like how we feeling, you know, at a certain time, you know, we just do it when it seem right, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like as far as like releasing music or like even when we recording music, like you gotta feel right, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a nigga that's just finna be, you know, recording music just to be recording. I mean, like I record, you know, music like all the time, like like I try to every day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I just try to make sure I, I make my steps with purpose, make my moves with purpose, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, like as far as like Kendrick and what he doing, I think it's beautiful. I think Kendrick is, a, you know, shedding light. He's making it easier for people to, you know, be positive, you know what I'm saying? He's making it easy, easier for, you know, me to do what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? Because like I'm not necessarily, you know, projecting a negative message, you know what I'm saying? Like the music that I make, you know what I'm saying? But, like, um, it's just make, like, when people is, like, people listen to, like, songs like I Love Myself and shit like that. And it's like, by the time you get the preacher sign and you hear shit like Sheba or, like, Holy Water and shit like that, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like, I mean, like, it'll probably still get, you know, accepted and people are still receiving it in a way. But I feel like, you know, the, the music that other people make has a lot to do with how, other people's music is received. You know what I'm saying? It all piggybacks off of each other in a way. What's a studio? Sense. What's a studio session like with you? Explain that vibe. How do how we get? You say you get in a studio basically every day. What's that music making process like for you? Um, for the most part, just a lot of weed smoke. You got <laughs> K. Tovin at a computer, and then like either he's making a beat at the moment, or we just going through beats till we find something that click. And then, like, once I find something that click, I'll just be, you know, kind of thinking on it for a couple of minutes. And I either have, like, the hook or, like, how I'm going to start off the verse. And then I just go in after that, and then I just run with it after that. That's pretty much how it goes. I'll probably have, like, a line. Like, I have, like, the first line of a verse. I'll be like, all right, I know how I'm going to go. Like, or, like, I have, like, a concept. I know, like, all right, I know the concept of how I'm going to go. Or I have like a hook and be like, all right, that's the hook. I'm gonna come up with the verse off of this hook, like or some shit like that. It just depends. Favorite track you ever put out? Give it to me. What, what, what would that be for you so far? Mm-hmm, man, I'm still listening to Preacher Son. Go get that Preacher Son into a house. Favorite favorite track out Preacher Son. If, if it was just one one to pick from, what what's the favorite track from it so far? And also, what's what's what's, what's been getting the, the what's been getting the, the best? 
um, reaction from the from the people? What are they rocking with the most? I mean, the whole album good. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I've listened to of, it. It's, a lot it's of people very say good. They listen to everything. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. back when we was asking people, like, so uh, what do you listen to the most or whatever? Like that was like uh, we listened to everything. You know, like a lot of people name like three or four songs or like five songs. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't nobody. It was just like this 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 one song. It's like you know. The bees knees, you know what I'm saying? There wasn't nobody that was just like that. But I'll probably say like my favorite song right now is either like Sunday service or Living on the Sun. And you don't write, right? You you, you nah, no write. lyrics wrote down just all off the top of the dome. Yeah. How long does that take? Does that mean you you know you take more time with the music or is it just let's put it out? If it's on my mind, I'm getting sometimes it out. Sometimes it takes like fifteen minutes, sometimes wow. it takes thirty, sometimes it takes an hour. Like it just depends. Yeah. Corner Story This is probably about my, my favorite track From you Corner Story And the video I like the vibe from it And everything What How long did that one take How long was Was production for that song And, and, and we Hold on Rob Gotta say what's up real quick We bringing in This the nigga that's on Corner Stories with me Yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, What's happening though? You alright? We were bringing up Corner Stories. We yeah. were bringing up my favorite track so far, yeah. what I've listened since I've been listening to Preacher Son. Yeah. Explain that process, making this track, and what, what, what went all into that? Well, actually, that that day, I remember that day every day. Mm -hmm. Now, still, I was coming from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and they was in East Ridge at the time. They was in the basement. Uh, it was a uh, Rello King. And the guy who shoot his videos, Keith Ward, it was at grandma or their mom's house. It was in the basement. And they played the beat. And it was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I did this shit today. You know what I'm saying? This shit called, I'm called Corner Stories. He started playing it. And I'm like, oh, shit, this motherfucker hard as hell. And I, like, closed my eyes and listened to it. And I was like, oh, shit, this shit took me back to when I was little. And when I was, like, playing outside. And I can remember seeing crackheads, like, running up down the street, doing what uh, they do. Uh, I had a... Uh, <laughs> Let me see. You good player, player. I came up with like the whole like whole scheme of it, like when I was leaving the bank actually though. Like uh like uh I probably went straight to K House after I leave I was leaving the bank. I didn't even have the beat. But like I remember like at one point I was going over to K House every day listening to that same beat though. Like for about like a good two or three days, you know what I'm saying? And then like I like I was in, in the car and like in my head I was like crack kid sitting on the corner. And then like I was like, that'd be tight. And then like I called him up. He was talking about he was in town, so he pulled up to the studio. He was writing his verse while I was coming up. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I did like two verses. By the time I finished like the second verse, like he had his verse done. So like he just you know hopped in there and you know it went It's like it's always a bounce, like when it's me Whenever it's me, him, or Isaiah, or Ricky Blue, or whoever it might be, it's like a balance. It's like everybody. It's natural. Yeah, it's, it's natural. like a natural yeah. feel because we all friends outside of music. So whenever we, like, get around each other and, like, do songs, it ain't, like, no no awkwardness or no, like, it don't come off as poppish or nothing. It just come off real, you know? And that's how me and him is. Like, me and a song with Kevin might be different with me and a song and Isaiah or, or Kevin and Isaiah or whoever it might be. Cause it's it's just the feel of it. Like in that moment, you gotta capture the shit. It was a tight little feeling. I like the shit. I hate my verse, but I like the song all together though. Cause it's on Preacher Son. I like the shit. Preacher Son, my favorite album. Best album of the year so far. Fuck that make shit. Sure. Oh, we gonna make shit. sure you make sure you go. If you haven't by now, make sure you, you go get that get Preacher Son. Son. Rapping the life that they don't live, but the impact is having on the youth. It's kind of like a double, double nigga. I you? mean, I feel like not all of it is bad, but I can understand, like, you know, certain people, you know, who just be talking reckless and, like, misleading people. I can see how that plays on the younger generation up under us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know how influential rap was to me when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I know that shit wasn't half as reckless. They couldn't say half of the shit that there was like you know that they say now they couldn't say it back then on the radio mm -hmm. even though niggas were still saying crazy shit i don't feel like it's you know this crazy you know what i'm saying but like i said i don't feel like it's all bad but like i do see like how some of the shit can be detrimental to the youth and i don't i don't you know i don't promote that or i don't support that at all you know what i'm saying yeah yeah but you know i mean but at the same time 
I mean, I don't know, bro. That shit just complicated. I just try to stay out of it. You know what I'm saying? To just do me. I know we like got a certain purpose and a certain message, and I guess that's what we here for. You know, to balance the shit out, and you know, um, actually, you know, say some shit with some substance, and actually say some shit, with, you know, with some purpose, because obviously. That ain't what everybody else is caring about. But, like, at the same time, obviously, some people fuck with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, they, in a way, I mean, like, I guess they making the type of music that they make because that's where the money at. But, like, I don't know. Like, it, it just depends, bro. It's a lot of questions there. It's just, like, I'm sure they doing it for a purpose. It's yeah. just, what's the purpose that they doing it for? I'm not sure. But One adjective described Tuck's music. One adjective, just honest. Honest. Yeah. Preacher son, out right now. When when can we expect you to go back in the lab? When can we expect? We're already in the lab, man. New music, new music. When can we expect a new mixtape, new 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 music, new something from you? When you, you can expect a new song next week. Next week, next week. John um, Witherspoon. Since you don't write, John I feel like it was only right that we end this. This, if you don't mind. We we end this interview with you going in off the top of the dome. All right, acapella. If you got something for me, let us out in style. That preacher's son is out right now. Go get it. Tut about to go in on the beat. All no right. beat actually. Acapella. Let's get it. Um. <coughs> All right. A product of my environment. Maybe that's the reason that I tend to complicate what should be so basic. I'm riding down Lee Highway screaming, fuck the police, because every nigga think the feds are racist. Good evening, officer, what seems to be the problem. He put me out my car and searched me down for caution. Wanna call him a bitch-ass nigga, but I'ma hold my tongue. I don't want to repeat a poor old Rodney, but fuck it, he done called for backup patrollers. I'm like, ain't the speed, why you pulling me over? Thinking I got some weed in my car or coca. Flashlight in my eyes, trying to see if I'm sober. Flashing blue lights on the top of a cop car. His buddy talking about, look, we got us a pop star. Start, knowing the main reason that these little bitches even put us over cause they saw a nigga in a nice ass car. Nigga, we ain't stupid. Nigga, we ain't slow. The government pimping niggas. Nigga, we just hoes. Thank you to Mr. Lincoln for freeing the slaves, but we still ain't free. We just getting them paid. You mean if it was cheaper than to get you a slave, that possibly will still be in chains today. But still I rock chains like a young Kute. We're riding in the chain. We're riding in a range with a young group A. What's the young Ah oh, shit, Gucci beside me, but still legal like an idea. Still Bubba Green in. like Pat O'Reilly, classic like the Ivy League. I don't know how to speak on such a topic, just bitches topless. Quit worrying about me, put some money in your pocket. Shout out to DJ <laughs> Logan Garrett and OrangeMixtapes.com. I'm here with Tut. Yeah, shout out to the homies over at Orange Mixtapes. It's the understood truth. Y'all make sure y'all go to tuthouse.co. Get that preacher son. You donate $10 or more, you get a house sticker. You donate $25 or more, you get these motherfucking house t-shirts. So, uh, yeah, y'all make sure y'all go check that out. Check out the website, check out the SoundCloud that's at the bottom of the screen right now. Yes, sir. And you are rocking with this, MrTelefair.com. I'm here with Tuck. And it's the house, bitch. <laughs>